Thanks, David. Um, so ECT, we're, we've been uh, we've been operating for about fifteen years in this space, and essentially uh, we're developing clean technology that enables the stable transition to net zero. And I guess that's that's it in a nutshell. Um, if we go to the next slide, there's um, there's a standard disclaimer. We'll uh, move through that as well. So company overview, I won't linger too long on this. Um, obviously, this will be available for everyone to view afterwards. Um, we've, we've got a number of technologies and, and we'll go to the next slide. I think that's probably a, a bit easier to see. So we've got, we've got largely four technologies in the space where our purpose in developing these technologies has been about bridging the gap between today's use of resources and tomorrow's zero emission future. So for the last 15 years, we've been developing technologies that have been focusing on taking low rank or waste resources, things like um, uh, you know, lignite, um, biomass, waste plastics, and actually converting those with a low emission or, or zero emission footprint. Um, our, our most developed technology is cold dry, and that's a, a unique drying method where we take the water out of um, those particular feedstocks like lignite and, and biomass. That's really important. It sounds really simple, and, and I guess in a way it is. It's just uh, no one else has been doing it where we apply low grade heat so we don't combust anything. In all the, in all of the technologies that we apply, we try to keep um, low temperature. We try to use catalysts. The, the aim of the game in all of this processing of low rank um, materials is to not allow the carbon to, to become gaseous. And, and obviously high temperature tends to have the carbon become gaseous. We like to keep the carbon fixed and physical. That way it's a lot easier to control um, and it means it's not contributing to CO2. We've been listed for a while. Um, uh, it's interesting, a lot, of, a lot of people say, well, you know, you, we, we're touting all of the, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a wave of excitement around hydrogen and net zero emission. We take the view that we've been doing this for 15 years and it's finally the market's caught up with our technology. So a lot of the phrases that are, that are touted, we've been taught, you know, cold dry has been net zero emission. That's been our game um, uh, for, and that's the most developed technology. Our other technology is Hydromore, which is an, a, a green iron making or a cleaner iron making process. Cogen is about producing hydrogen. And then we have another technology, um, CDP, which is uh, about turning this waste into diesel. We've spent about 115 mil in developing this technology suite, and we're quite developed. If people are familiar with the TRL scale of, of development, um, you'll see that TRL eight to nine is where we're literally on the verge of building a commercial plant now. Go to the next slide, please. So at the heart of this, we've got our gateway technology, which is cold dry. Um, that establishes our, uh, our entry point and that key value proposition to then feeding all the other technologies downstream. It's, it's taking advantage of the, the traditional methods of drying have always been heating and squeezing. So using a lot of heat, using a lot of pressure. Um, we take a very low energy approach. We've, uh, we've aimed to use uh, low grade waste heat effectively, no combustion, um, which means then the only emission exposure we have, which is um, scope two emissions, which is uh, the electricity that we use. And, and for that, we can even produce our own electricity or we can purchase green electricity. Um, next slide, please. We've just announced, um, you might, if, if you've been following our stock, we've announced uh, a couple of weeks back our headline project. Uh, that's the, the net zero emission hydrogen refinery. That's where we're developing and we're, we're finalising the feasibility on um, putting in place a, a cold dry front end that will then process both biomass and lignite. Probably uh, to explain this better is we'll go to the next slide and you can see a, a, a more visual um, a view of that. Um, we'll go to the next slide, but I'll jump back to this one. So this is this is the over, this is the uh, process that we're we're looking at for our headline project, where we take lignite and waste biomass, we mix them together. Um, that's that's uh, put through the cold dry process, and then we put it through a hydrogen refinery. Now there's number of, there's a number of processes inside that um, that produces a, a char, an agricultural grade char, syngas and a hydrogen heavy stream. We can either produce hydrogen or we can produce 
um, formic acid. The reason we choose formic acid at this stage is that the hydrogen infrastructure for distribution and storage isn't, isn't um, there at the moment. So we want to produce something that is a hydrogen carrier. Um, people may have heard, and if you're interested in the hydrogen space, we talk a lot about hydrogen carriers, things like ammonia, um, formic acid is a hydrogen carrier. Uh, we'll go back to that prior slide if we could. So the whole target here is that we're looking to support the stable transition to net zero. Uh, there's a lot of talk about, you know, all the varying colours of hydrogen, green hydrogen, blue hydrogen, all the colour spectrum in between. Um, we're a transition technology. So we, we believe that, you know, invariably we're going to end up with a pure renewable uh, economy. But that could be 30, 40 years away where that's, you know, entirely renewable. In the meantime, uh, we, we're trying to provide transition technology to then provide a economies of size and scale, establish then the commercial, um, you know, the commercial credentials behind this process. But in doing so, we are targeting, uh, performing that in a net zero uh, fashion. So our whole approach is that, you know, you still should be able to use your conventional um, uh, you know, conventional resources like uh, lignite and, and biomass and, and waste plastics, but it should be, and, and it can be done in net zero fashion. We'll skip to across, uh, two slides ahead. So the big question is why lignite? Now, we never, we always call it lignite. We call it lignite because we've spent a lot of time researching lignite, so we know what it is. Um, common nomenclature is more brown coal. People call it brown coal. Now, we take the view that, um, and, and not just our view, but you know the views of scientists from Federation University as well and others, lignite is actually, and, and if you look at the stats of it, chemically it's closer to compost than it is ever to black coal. And that's why it works so well with what we're doing. Um, it's about 26% plant matter and, and it's, it's a very young coal. So it's got, it's, and it, the only reason it's ever been called coal is because it's been used like black coal. Now that use has been to just dig it up and burn it. Uh, for electricity. We think that's the worst way to do it. Um, uh, it's, it's a travesty of, of such great chemical feedstock that you would try to burn it, whereas we try to break it apart into its chemical components. And we do that with net zero emission. That in doing so and treating it like a plant matter and treating it like a biomass, um, you're able to separate all the really valuable chemical components. And if you do that properly, you can also do it with a net zero emission footprint. We'll go to the next slide. Again, this is just another way to see, this is more of an, a, an engineering process flow diagram of, of what we're looking to put in place, our headline project. Um, we'll go to the next slide. One of our um, product streams isn't just hydrogen, so we are producing hydrogen. In, this, in the combination of biomass and, and lignite, you will end up with, um, you know, approximately half of it being hydrogen heavy syngases, the hydrocarbons that come out, as well as um, half of it being char. Now, if, if, if anyone hasn't um, seen the documentary or, already, but I, I recommend you go and uh, have a, a watch of Kiss the Earth, it's available on Netflix. It really explains what's coming um, with regards to soil carbon and the need for us to be able to produce available quantities of carbon for replenishing the carbon stocks of soil uh, for, for further fertility and, and, and for growing food. Um, the difference that what, what we're doing is we're decoupling ourselves from carbon capture and storage. Now, we, we, don't, we don't hold a view as to whether carbon capture and storage is gonna work or not um, by the very nature of the fact that we're aiming to be net zero emission immediately without the use of carbon capture and storage. So our view is we wanna produce large quantities of hydrogen and agricultural char. In fact, our headline project will become the largest producer of um, agricultural char in, in Australia, if not the Southern Hemisphere. Go to the next slide, please. We've already established a site for this, um, uh, for this larger project. Uh, you'll see the white dotted lines. Um, that's, that's the site that we've recently purchased as per our um, uh, ASX announcement. The green dotted lines, that's the site, that's the extension of the site that we need and the extension of the land for the project that we need that we're in negotiation with, um, with Energy Australia. Energy Australia owns the Yalorn Power Station who have scheduled that for shutdown. Um, we're big supporters of shutting down the power station. We, we think that that's the, you know, 
Uh, it's become, initially, it was a, it was a great initiative um, established by Sir John Monash to create the, the cheapest electricity in Australia, which then made Victoria the manufacturing base of, of Australia. However, in our modern era, we've grown to learn that that's, that's not the best way to use um, the lignite. And in fact, it, it contributes to um, climate change. And so we're, we're supporters of the shutdown of the power station, but we do think that there's a very valuable resource still left in the ground that then can help to drive a hydrogen industry and, and turn Victoria into the Silicon Valley of, of hydrogen. Go to the next, next slide. Again, there's some metrics here that have um, uh, that sort of helped to explain our partners, our budget for the um, uh, for the, the project that we're building, when we're going to commence, um, and and certain feedstocks that we'll be using in the outputs. We'll jump to the next one as well. Um, we'll jump past that one. That's that's just again showing some of the key projects. Uh, sorry, the key outcomes. Uh, on top of this project that we're doing, we're actually completing a large scale test facility. So in terms of development and how we've progressed our technology in comparison to our peers in the hydrogen space, we're well ahead of most of these developments. Um, we're we're finalising the completion of this large scale test facility. It's also a commercial demonstration facility for our core technology, cold dry. Um, you, you'll see the diagram there. Most of that's been built. Um, the only thing that's remaining, which we've purchased the equipment of, is the, is the rotary kiln to the far right. Um, that's at Bacchus Marsh, and um, we, we should have that ready for commissioning. We're hoping around February next year. Uh, next slide, please. Quick corporate snapshot. Um, we've, we've reinvigorated our board recently. We've got a great uh, chairman, Jason Marenko. Um, you know, he's got great credentials uh, is, is, and we've got also um, two other directors, Tim Wise and James Blackburn. Um, Ashley Moore is our chief engineer. Uh, we're, we're a market cap at the moment of about 65 mil. Um, and, and yeah, we've, 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 uh, we're pretty excited with the fact that the market wave of excitement around hydrogen and net zero emissions has finally caught up to the technology we've been developing for the last 15 years. So it's, it's great. Glenn, and on that note, and as you say, you've, you, you sort of, the wave is rising just as you're hitting that, that uh, go decision. So while the technology has been advancing over a period, as you mentioned, how, uh, how serendipitous is the, the, the green thematic coming in just at that time when, uh, when you need it most? Well, it's great. I mean, uh, yeah, we, 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 we'd already, we'd certainly bought into that vision. I mean, that's been at the heart of our, our purpose for the, um, uh, the last, you know, if, if not 15 years, the purpose statement that I mentioned at the start has been with us since 2013. And every year we review it and every year we decide that that, it's not to change. Um, it's been the core of what we've doing, what we've been doing all this time. So, yeah, it's we we felt that we it was always going to come eventually. Um, my background um, was Macquarie Bank in in structured products, but then I became a ESG um, a, a stockbroker in the early days, and and back then no one cared about ESG, <laughs> but it was, a, it was something you could see the triple bottom line. It made sense, it had to happen. Um, and here we are today where it's all locking, locking and loading for everyone. Perfect timing, as you say. Now you call it a test facility, but how big is it? And what, what will some of the outputs be? Um, I think some of the outputs were mentioned on that, that single slide, but uh, we're looking at about a, a 25 to 30,000 tonne production of cold dry. Um, that would mean then using about sixty to seventy thousand tons of of, um, uh, of lignite and biomass at the front end, and then that would translate into about twelve and a half thousand tons of char and and the equivalent in syngas, hydrogen heavy syngas. So when you have a look at put that in the context of some of the other peers out there, sort of developing their their demonstration projects where they're talking you know hundreds of tons or you know we we're at that end where that that is the last um, scale for demonstration before you go and build a commercial plant. And our headline project is to build a commercial plant. Now, we've clearly got um, some analysts on this call because they're asking very technical questions that I'm hoping you can answer. Um, will the COH Gen technology be scaled up in Bacchus Marsh or on site in the Trobe Valley for H2 production? 
Um, it, it's highly likely that we'll scale it up first at Bacchus Marsh. I mean, that's the purpose of Bacchus Marsh. It's, it, it is a broader site for R&D. Um, so I would suggest that as we move up the scales at, uh, at, at you know, Cogen, we will certainly be looking at Bacchus Marsh as that, that um, grounding point, particularly because uh, with a lot of our downstream technologies, Cogen and, and Hydromore, uh, coal dry is necessary for the front, front end processing. So we've, we've added a layer of protection to our technology by ensuring that they all link into coal dry, our most developed technology. Now I've got a, a sort of a dual question here on funding. Yep. Funding for the test facility, is that in place or is there a little bit more to go? And on a broader scale, how, um, how interested is government and, and other similar uh, groups uh, interest in funding and granting money to the company given the, the leading edge technology that you've developed? Yeah, um, I'll answer the first one first, or sorry, the second one first. Um, government interest is skyrocketed uh, and, and we've got our work cut out for us just trying to keep up pace with the, the grant processes for a lot of grants that are out there now where we align with and, and meet the requirements for a good three or four of them. Um, we started that process with Invest Victoria. That was just a small sort of $2 million um, low interest loan that was provided. But that's important because once you've got Invest Victoria on site, they help you then walk through the other parts of, of uh, the state government. Um, we've recently submitted to the uh, H2 Hub Implementation Grant Program. There's a couple of others that are scheduled to come out, of which now we've got a, a very well developed, um, uh, you know, let's call it a feasibility pack that can be slotted into most of these. Um, the one thing that stands out when we talk to government is that uh, we, we do tick a lot of the boxes. You know, we still have to deal with the elephant in the room that we're taking um, uh, lignite from the ground and mixing it with biomass. Um, that's something we can't get away from. But again, we're, we're a transition technology. Uh, we see that there's great benefit in being able to do, you know, take advantage of that valuable resource in the ground, um, but do so in a net zero emission fashion. So a lot of government interest at, at many levels across many departments, whether that's resources or energy um, or environment, um, we're getting a lot of interest from government, there's no doubt about it. Um, in terms of the funding, we're, we're, we're funded for the, the development. Uh, our cash in bank is sufficient to develop, continue to develop um, Bacchus Marsh. And so that's not a particular issue, but we're, we're focusing now on the next stage of growth funding now the, uh, the, uh, the, the headline project. That's gonna require some more funding. Um, but that being said, we've got a lot of availability of funding now because we've got deep in the money options that are sitting um, you know, on our market, our ECTOEs. So in terms of access to funding, we're not that concerned at this stage. We believe that now the market has recognised where we sit inside this hydrogen space and this net zero emission space. And from there, we'll just keep on developing and, and sticking to our knitting. I mean, we, we, our strategy hasn't really changed that much over the last two years. Um, so we're just going to keep pushing ahead, find, finish off the, uh, the, the demonstration project and the test facility at Bacchus Marsh and push ahead in completing feasibility at um, Latrobe Valley.